um, SCWF bird guy and habitat education manager. Um, and I don't know anything about sea turtles and I'm very excited to learn uh, today from Susan McLaughlin. She did not hesitate. I asked if uh, you know she could present today on sea turtles and she said yes immediately. So I am, uh, we're very happy to have her. Um, and I'm gonna be learning along with you guys. Again, um, like Shannon said, please um, submit your questions through the chat box and I'll take those questions and you know whenever there's an appropriate time to ask Susan um, I'll just kind of cut in there and uh, and ask Susan those questions uh, throughout the presentation and um, if there are some that uh, we can't get to for for any reason reason we'll, we'll get answers uh, for you and, and send them to you later uh, I guess the aquarium is also uh, celebrating this year I think it's the 20th anniversary from from what I've read so that is very exciting and I think y'all also are celebrating the 300th uh, sea turtle being released after uh, um, being rescued from the wild. Um, so I'm excited to learn about, about this process. I've been there once um, after the um, hospital was created, the care center. Um, it's an amazing facility. Um, so if y'all, if, if anybody has not been uh, there yet, please go. Uh, they're doing fantastic things there. And um, Susan, I'll let you uh, take it away uh, at, at this time. And thank you again. Awesome, yeah. It's nice to see you and uh, nice to get to talk to everybody today. Um, like they said, my name is Susan McLaughlin um, and I am an educator here at the aquarium. Um, and if you caught any of the beginning while we were kind of getting started, we were talking about how much fun I've been having doing a lot of our, our virtual stuff um, in a world that's gone very virtual. <laughs> um, luckily, that was something that I had kind of already been doing here at the aquarium. Um, but yeah, if you have questions along the way, put them in the chat send them my way. I am happy to be interrupted. I love kind of letting the conversation go wherever you guys have questions. Um, but just to start off, I am in our sea turtle recovery center. Um, so this is actually the second floor of our sea turtle hospital. We have a basement level um, and then this top level here, which is actually an exhibit. Um, so if you come and visit the aquarium, you can actually see into the working hospital. I'm kind of Say on the screen a little bit. There's these big windows here. Um, there's actually guests standing outside, kind of peering in. Um, but you guys are getting the sort of behind the scenes. You're going to kind of get to look in from the other side here um, and get, get to meet some of these sea turtle patients that we're caring for. Um, and it is our 20th anniversary this year, and we are coming up on that 300th sea turtle release. Um, I'm really excited for that. Getting to watch any of the sea turtles go back out to the ocean after they've recovered here. Um, is incredible every single time, but um, I think 300 will be a really fun one to celebrate. We did just have, I believe, nine sea turtles got their um, blood checked um, and their physical exams that helped them to um, be able to kind of decide whether it's time to be able to send them back to the ocean. So nine of them kind of went through their final checks. Um, and we haven't gotten an announcement yet on who's cleared and who's not. It actually has to go through a lot of different people and the Department of Natural Resources and. Um, it's a whole process, but once we get them cleared, um, one of those will be our 300th. Um, so we're definitely going to live stream that release on our Facebook page. We would love if we could have it um, out in the public where people could come, but trying to social this in to keep everybody and those turtles safe. So um, we'll definitely be live streaming it from our Facebook page and from our Instagram. So check that out if you want to watch that. Um, you'll get to see me be even more excited and animated because I could hardly contain myself when we're releasing this turtle. <laughs> A little background on me. Um, I'm not as exciting as the sea turtles, but um, <laughs> I'm originally from Ohio, so I'm one of those many, many South Carolina um, people here that um, came from Ohio. Um, but I went to school there at Miami University for zoology. Um, got my degree there and then ended up moving here um, and then moving back. I kind of went all over the place, but I worked at the Columbus Zoo um, for about six years or seven years. Um, and some in education, some in animal care. I actually was a sea lion trainer for them um, for a couple of years too. So I've done all kinds of stuff, but I ended up here um, at the aquarium and um, ended up in education. And it wasn't initially where I was trying to plan to go, but it's been the best. Um, so you might've heard me say earlier, this is the best place ever to work. <laughs> we definitely have a lot of fun here um, and we get to see these amazing animals. Um, and I, I kind of focus on those virtual programs. So I do a lot of like virtual field trips for kids. 
Um, we offer these things called critter calls right now, um, so that people, if they're having new meetings, um, they can have me kind of pop in with a sea turtle or with an alligator really close to the stream um, to like a family Zoom meeting or birthday party or work staff meeting or whatever, um, whatever it is. So those are super fun too, getting to kind of just bring the animals to people where they are um, in a very weird time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, anyways, we are in the hospital right now. Um, we're in this upper level view, this kind of, I think of recovery sort of as like where a lot of the physical therapy goes on. Um, when our procedural patients are first brought in, they can be, usually they're brought in, somebody sees them out on the beach, and um, we call that stranded. Um, that's the most common place that we would probably see a sea turtle that ends up being stranded and needing help, um, or somebody accidentally catches them on a hook and line, like a fisherman. Um, and, and they're usually going to call the Department of Natural Resources after that. And the Department of Natural Resources is going to kind of dispatch to us. They're going to either give us a call, and we'll go pick the turtle up, um, or they have a whole team of volunteers that will bring them to us. Um, so it's a big team effort. I think everybody's trying to get the sea turtles here. Once they're here, they go into our hospital level down below um, and kind of start off their treatment there. Um, we do have a surgical suite here if they need surgery. Um, we'll see some, some of that kind of stuff. Um, and we do a CT scan. Um, I can't actually see it from this room here, but we have a huge CT scanner. It's actually an equine uh, CT scanner, so it's built for horses because we have such big sea turtles that come in here sometimes. Um, we need to be able to give them a full CT scan um, even though they're very large. So we do have some really great facilities here, um, and we do work with other um, entities that maybe need to borrow it, um, borrow some of our equipment too. So it's pretty amazing. There's always something interesting going on. Um, I'm actually going to share my screen with you guys really quick so I can show you. Um, let's see. So I can show you guys just a couple of pictures. What kind of surgery? I saw that one too. Well, we're definitely going to see that. Here we go. Um, just to give you um, a little start here. Okay, hopefully you can see that. That's just the aquarium. I like to start with a picture of it if you haven't been here before. It's beautiful, right on Cross Harbor. Um, definitely come visit us. And we were talking about all the different types of sea turtles we have, too. So there are seven different types of sea turtles in the world, um, which is really not that many if you think about so many other species of animals. Um, but there's only seven types in the world, and you actually get to see four of them off of our coast here in South Carolina. We're really lucky to get to see um, all four of the species that you're looking at here. Um, we do get leatherback sea turtles, who is the largest um, species of sea turtle in the world. And they're named after having that very leathery shell, um, which helps them to dive very deep in the water, much deeper than most of the other species of sea turtles. When that water pressure is compressing on them, um, they don't have a hard shell that can crack, which more flexible. We don't have any leatherback sea turtles in our hospital right now. Um, I think we've only ever had one um, that came into the hospital, and we've actually been able to help on the beaches with um, a couple of others. Um, they're often so large that it would stress them out more to move them than to be able to try to care for them on the spot. Um, but we did have one here who was almost 500 pounds, which is surprisingly still pretty small for a leather back sea turtle. Um, they can get to be up to 2,000 pounds. So really, really big turtles. I would love to see one. I've actually never seen one in real life, but someday, maybe. <laughs> Um, the loggerhead sea turtles, those are our state reptile. Um, they come up and nest on our beaches here, so you definitely see them. Definitely see them in the wild, definitely see them coming into our hospital. Um, they're named after having this really big head, uh, which helps them with a strong jaw. They like to eat really crunchy stuff, so like uh, horseshoe crabs or other types of crabs, maybe even big fish. Um, We've got a resident sea turtle here that lives in one of our tanks full time, um, who's been here her whole life. Um, so she won't be released, but she loves to eat um, the heads of fish. She gets like a big salmon head as a snack. So very crunchy, very strong jaws. <laughs> and then we have the green sea turtles. Um, green sea turtles are kind of named after the food that they eat and um, after uh, kind of the turns the color of their body a little bit green too. They eat a lot of seaweed um, and different sea grasses. Um, when they're young, they eat a little bit of fish too, a little bit of meat. But then as they become adults, they pretty much switch to an all greens diet. They eat almost all greens. 
breast and sea turtles are mostly eating meat. And then the Kemp's Ridley sea turtles are um, my personal favorite. They're the smallest and the most endangered species. Um, so all different species of sea turtles are either threatened or endangered. And um, they're, all, they're all not doing very well out in the wild there, but the Kemp's Ridley's have some of the smallest numbers. Um, but we have had a huge number of Kemp's Ridley's come in this year. Uh, most of them getting caught on a hook and line. I think part of that sounds really bad, like we need to stop fishermen from catching sea turtles. Um, but I think the reality of it is we're seeing so much more of it because people are informed. I think that a lot of fishermen now know not to just cut the line and let the sea turtle go. There's a lot of good signage. There's um, people on a lot of the piers that know what to do. Um, so we're getting more of those sea turtles in to have those hooks removed, but I think that's because less of them are just being cut and let go with stuff that's still stuck inside of them. So, kind of sad, but also a good thing. <laughs> you kind of think about big picture. Um, definitely good that we're getting those sea turtles out. Getting hook and lines out are probably one of the easier things that we do here. So if somebody asked about surgeries. Um, I can't see all the comments right now, but I saw that one earlier. So that's one of the most common surgeries we're doing right now is removing um, a hook from a sea turtle. Sometimes it's stuck in their cheek, sometimes it's in their tongue, or even down in their throat and their glottis. Um, and those are pretty easy removals um, compared to maybe some bigger issues that can come in if there's surgeries on um, like an amputation. Sometimes sea turtles can get wrapped up in old fishing gear like um, netting or old fishing line, and it can cause them to need to have a flipper amputated. It's a much bigger surgery, um, but it's absolutely been done here. So we've got a great team. They can do all kinds of stuff. I can pause for a minute and see. I'm going super fast. <laughs> do you have questions before I, I move too much further? Hey, we do have, uh, you know, some fishermen uh, and fisherwomen that follow us. Um, are there, are there, are they developing, um, like, I guess, hook manufacturers uh, developing any, any hooks that, um, you know, don't cause this problem or are less apt to get into uh, um, the, the mouth of a turtle? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the more common hooks that are used are called J hooks because um, they're just shaped like a J. Um, and those do get caught pretty easily in sea turtles um, in their mouths, but a circle hook is curved a little bit more in, um, and it is a lot less likely to get caught um, on a sea turtle's neck um, or in their in their throat. So um, I think it's supposed to still be able to catch fish just the same, but um, it is a little bit better for the sea turtles. Um, we do still see those come in occasionally, but um, but the, so I think they've got a much higher success rate of not catching the sea turtles. Okay, and what was that hook called again? A circle hook. Circle hook. So it actually okay. goes like just a little bit more in a circle. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you will see, I mean, a lot of the injuries that we're going to look at here um, have a lot to do with a lot of fishing gear and stuff being in the ocean. Um, and part of the reason for that is obviously people are near the ocean when they're fishing, but they also specially design stuff like fishing line um, and netting and all to be really strong and not break down in salt water. So it makes sense that that stuff lasts a really long time once it's out in the water too. So we do see yeah. that causing a lot of problems. You know, and we had a question, have they ever swallowed? Um, I know you said y'all you, you have extracted some from the throat, but um, uh, it, is that relatively effective? Um, or what if it goes down even further? Um, have, what's, the, yeah. what's the scenario there? Yeah, it's actually um, a patient I definitely want to talk about is that exact example. So um, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. um, I, I think actually I've got a picture on the next slide of not that one, but this is a happy picture. This is when we get to take those sea turtles home. Um, release them back out into the ocean. Like I said, we're coming up on number 300, so pretty excited about that. But um, this picture here um, is of a sea turtle named Ed. Um, we're going to get to see Ed today, um, but I want to show you this is when they found Ed. Um, Ed is a Kemp's Ridley, a juvenile Kemp's Ridley. You can see he had swallowed um, some fishing line. He's actually, they called in about him because he was caught on a hook. Um, and when they pulled him up, um, I think they tossed the net down, kind of scooped him up rather than pulling him by the hook. Um, they had some guidance from DNR to help them out with that. Um, but once they got him up, they realized it wasn't just the hook that had just happened. He did have fishing line going all the way down his throat. Not only that, you actually can't see it in this picture so much, but um, I don't think I posted that one online. Um, but the fishing line going down his throat all the way through his body, his intestines and everything, is actually coming off the other end of it. 
So um, yeah, this one long piece of um, braided um, plastic fishing line that went all the way through his body. So um, that caused a lot of issues for him. Um, if you're not used to looking at turtles, it's kind of hard to tell what's a um, good weight for a turtle, but I can kind of look at him. You probably can tell he looks pretty skinny. If you look at his neck, um, it's just like you can see the bones really hollowed out between his neck and his shell. Most sea turtles, they shouldn't have like a skinnier neck. It should go kind of fat, right? Straight back to the shell. So he's very, very skinny. Um, I was scared the day he came in and I did not think it looked like it was going to be a good situation. He's hardly moving. Um, you can just see his, his ribs through the bottom of his shell too. Um, it just looks really horrible. Um, but he had three surgeries. Um, he had all kinds of different stuff done um, and it's been a really long recovery for him too. I'm actually going to go out of my screen here um, and we can walk over and get a nice close look at him. Um, he's definitely doing better. So he's been here for um, almost a year. He came in in August. Nice to be real for you guys. All right, he's been here since August. Um, and and actually, after doing some of the surgeries, we did find out that Ed is a girl. Um, I, I'm sure he's, um, they don't mind what way we call them. <laughs> but uh, but I'll, I'll mix that up multiple times, so forgive me. Um, but this is Ed, kind of here. And I'm actually going to pull this little thing back. You can see it through the side. So hard to tell when he's holding still here, but Ed is definitely doing better. Take a little nap right now. He's got his. Um, or her clippers stuck right underneath her. They kind of tuck their clippers in sometimes. Um, they cannot go into their shells, um, like some types of hands. Um, so they kind of sit on top of their clippers sometimes. To a little bit safer, but, um, but Ed is one of the sea turtles that just got some work done to see um, if it could possibly, um, if he could possibly be the 300th release. Um, I was definitely rooting for him. It did actually turn out they've got a couple more things they're checking on to be able to um, make sure that he's ready. So I don't think he'll be number 300, but, um, but hopefully his time's coming soon. That's all that question too. Um, do we have as many male turtles near the shore as female? Um, during this time of year, we're definitely going to see a lot of both um, right offshore because they are mating and then the females are coming up um, onto the beaches here. Um, so I'd say the females are probably closer. The males are pretty much never coming up um, on, on the land. Um, and then for turtles like these, kind of these um, they really aren't coming up on land at all. They're going to spend almost all their time in the water here. They're not usually coming up and nesting in South Carolina. They'll nest further south. Um, so I think we did have at least one kept for the nest in South Carolina. Sorry if you guys can hear the announcements. That means. Oh, we got comments about he's a big turtle. He's actually surprisingly small in here, but oh, I guess we were looking at the other ones <laughs> when that one came through. So this guy here, let me see what his most updated weight is. Um, about 13 pounds right now. So Ed is about 13 pounds, came in in August of last year. Um, yeah, they had to do quite a few surgeries. They actually had to remove part of his intestine um, because it was sort of tangled around that fishing line too. And it just kind of like, his intestines were trying to use the muscles to push the fishing line along and since they couldn't, it was kind of like stuck around it. So um, definitely ended up needing several surgeries. How big does this one get? That's a good question. So he's still young. He's going to get bigger than this. Um, he probably could get to be around 40, um, maybe even 100 pounds. Um, but 100 would be very big for a temp um, pretty small. Question. Now I did mention this is sort of our, our physical therapy area um, up on this floor. So you can see there's all these tanks um, this direction. Um, we also have some exercise things. So over here, this one is kind of built like a uh, treadmill pool. We'll go take a look at that in a second. And then we've got a deep diving pool over here too. We've got one of our sea turtles coming around in it. So the so really deep ones that are kind of help them um, dive deeper in the water and practice their swimming. This is a loggerhead named Sawyer. He's partially in here too because um, he has damage to his eye. Um, we don't know exactly what happened, but one of his eyes, um, the eyelid is fused together. Let's see when it comes over. Wow, <laughs> really up close view for us. So there's this eyelid kind of fused together on this side over here. Um, and so we have him in a big tank so we can put food in and see how good he is at hunting. Um, the food will not be live fish, um, but just seeing how good his instincts are kind of goes towards his 
to make sure you can still see well enough to be released. Back to the thing. Let me see you in a second. I want to make sure we can kind of see. Sometimes we end up with more sea turtles in here than we um, almost have room for. Right now we have 25 sea turtle patients. Um, and that is more than the number of tanks that we have. Um, but luckily, some of the smaller sea turtles, as long as they don't have any infectious diseases, um, we had so many of those temps ridleys that came in all, all fought on hooks, um, they can all kind of be housed together. So, um, so you've you got a group of four of them here. A little quadruple sea turtle party here. These are all juvenile temps ridleys. Um, and they've got that fencing between them. Um, and part of the reason they have the fencing between them is because sea turtles are not really social like we are. They don't really like to hang out with other sea turtles. It's going to look like people can decide there, but um, they really don't spend that much time together. So we keep them separate. Um, exactly what they would sort of prefer. Uh, they can see me through the glass on this side. You might notice sometimes when I come over um, that they look a little bit interested um, or at least kind of curious of what's going on. but. Um, we try to make sure they don't get too used to humans. Um, so luckily, they're mostly looking at a computer screen. When I walk over here, I'm just putting the screen up there. They're not really seeing me so much um, as they are seeing the computer screen. But there's glass on the other side that's facing like the guests. Um, but you know, this is the glass here. But that glass is one way for them. They cannot see um, all of the guests coming by every day. So that does kind of keep them a little bit more, a little more separate, a little more wild. We definitely don't want them to be getting too used to humans because we want to release them again. Another female attempt to get caught on a hook. Cooper and Coleman and Jasper's under the waterfall over there. And then Coleman is up there. So uh, if you guys have been to Charleston, you might recognize some of the, some of the names. We've, we're going with Charleston landmarks um, and street names and stuff like that for our theme of the year, um, but we pick a different theme every year. So this year it's Charleston stuff, um, but the last year it was Lion King characters. Um, year before that was Harry Potter. We always pick a, a fun theme. I don't know what next year will be. <laughs> Are the turtles tracked after their release? Oh, that's a great question. Let me actually you know, walk back this way. There we go. Hello. Don't make anybody dizzy. I get dizzy watching people walk around on webinars. <laughs> um, I do want to show you guys I actually have um, some tags. So um, we have one of these, a flipper tag, um, and it looks a little bit more like an earring. Um, let's see if I can get it out, but I can't. Um, it looks a little bit more like a little earring. It has a serial number on it. There. It clips onto their, tag, onto their flipper. That goes on the outside of their body. Um, and it has that number on there. They can be tracked by that number um, if you type the number into a database. It's not a GPS tracker or anything. And then they do have something called a pit tag. Tiny little microchip, little black grain of rice. The same, same exact stuff as if you um, had like your cat or dog microchip. Again, that's if you find a sea turtle, you'd be able to um, either scan them or type in their number, and then you would be able to tell um, if they had been seen before by maybe scientists doing research, if they've been to a hospital before. Um, but we do not usually put GPS trackers on them. Um, we have before and some places do occasionally, but that equipment is very expensive. Um, and you have to be part of an active research project in putting those GPS trackers on them. We are currently not doing that. Um, but we have still had reports where um, someone has logged on and said they've seen this, this sea turtle in whatever spot nesting um, and it's been one that's been in our hospital. Um, and we've had times where there are um, sea turtles that we've had come into our hospital that were tagged from being at a different hospital before for a different injury. So um, that's kind of interesting because then you can get all of their old medical records too. I want to say, guys, this little one over here is named Fox. And she's in our exercise tank. Um, she's got a very different story. So um, Fox is a little juvenile green sea turtle. Um, so now we've seen Sawyer, the loggerhead, a lot of Kemp's Ridleys, like Ed and all those little ones. They're all Kemp's Ridleys, and then this one's a green. Um, and Fox is in our exercise tank practicing swimming um, because he's got what's called bubble butt syndrome. 
sounds kind of silly, but it's actually that there was damage to um, her shell. You can kind of see the crack along the top here. And then these are weights. So we put the weights on her back um, to try to help her kind of keep the balance. It's got gap trapped inside of her shell from that injury. Um, and you can't really remove it. You wouldn't really remove it. It's just her body is more active there. Um, she's unable to keep her body level. This is kind of helps her keep herself level um, a little bit better while she's still growing and hopefully her body will heal um, from the inside out and that she'll be able to swim properly again and be able to start a couple of different things. She's got those weights on her back. Um, she kind of feels out of a whole harness that she wears. Um, but it's going to be a long recovery for her. Um, and she's actually been here since 2018. So um, she's got a long time um, to keep on healing um, and, and recovering from that. But Hopefully she'll get better. And um, they have started doing some stem cell therapy with her. So it's pretty crazy stuff. And um, they actually have gotten stem cells um, from another healthy sea turtle. Um, and then they're able to use those stem cells um, kind of injected into her um, spine and hope that it will um, regenerate and kind of, you know, um, heal up. How did she get injured? I believe she was a boat strike injury. Um, from that crack on her shell. Uh, but we've had sea turtles that have come in with the bubble butt syndrome um, from either being hit by a boat or by, <clears throat> sometimes they go through a hopper's wreck um, in our in the harbor um, or in other areas where they're dredging. Um, so that's where they've got those big machines out and they're kind of sucking up all the dirt and moving it somewhere else. Um, unfortunately, they do sometimes um, get one of those turtles sucked up through that machinery. Um, we've definitely seen both of those cases. Questions. Sorry, I didn't miss any questions here. And that Zania, I missed Jeff passing along. <laughs> Hey, I was just kind of curious. I, I'm and sorry if I missed this, but what's the most common species that you receive and why? That's a good question. Um, I'm not exactly sure actually. Um, I, I feel like last year we got a lot of green sea turtles in. Um, and then this year we definitely had an overwhelming number of um, temps friendly, but, um, but I don't know what one we see the most of. I would have to just check in with some of our sea turtle biologists and see what they know about. Um, it kind of depends on the time of year, too. Okay, okay. Is one species more abundant here in South Carolina than, than another since we do have four of them? Um, I think that the loggerheads are probably the most abundant, or at least people are seeing them a lot more since they come up and nest here. Um, okay. The other species are sometimes here when they're younger, like that's the juvenile green, juvenile pepper grizzlies. And they're here when they're younger for a lot of their feeding. Um, they migrate here, but they don't usually nest. So um, it depends on kind of how old they are and everything, too, where in the world they are in the migration. We see a lot of um, the very young hatchlings and the adults of, of the loggerheads in the world. So we see a lot of juveniles um, at the end of the season. Okay. Um, and I know you talked about, you know, fishing or injuries that were, um, I guess, sustained through through fishing and, and those types of activities and, and the boat strikes. Um, but what other common uh, challenges do they have that cause injuries? Um, yeah, um, I mean, I would say that uh, plastic pollution is probably one of the, the worst things that they face. Um, unfortunately, almost all of the sea turtles that come into our care pass some type of plastic while they're here. So they have, they all are eating plastic at some point while they're in the ocean. Um, sometimes they're mistaking it for things they like to eat. You might have heard um, turtles can um, end up thinking that like plastic bags are jellyfish. They look a lot like jellies, um, which sea turtles really like to eat. Um, but there's, there's a lot of different things too. Um, they, they eat all kinds of, they're eating hard plastic, or sea plastic, um, and a lot of them are impacted and, and need treated for that. So a lot of them have different issues um, with their GI yeah, tract and here too because of all the stuff they're eating. Um, and then beyond that, if they're not eating it, a lot of them are going to tangled in it too. Um, so they get they get caught in it, it makes it hard for them to swim around. Um, a lot of them get um, preyed on by sharks um, if they're not able to swim around. They kind of are uh, trapped in a net or something like that. They can't easily swim away. Um, and the hard shell only like, protects their, their body. They'll often lose. 
Uh, we had a we had another question. I'm I'm not sure if you um if you saw this one come through or not, but it says, can you further explain how those patches help them balance? Yes. So they're actually dive weights. Um, so if you've ever been scuba diving, you'll actually take like dive weights with you to help you weight yourself down. Um, we kind of just modified them for it. Because those are actually velcroed um, onto her shell, and because they're weighted, they help with um, that's where the air is stuck inside of her shell. So that kind of helps keep. Um, that part of her a little bit more level. You can see she's still, um, she's still kind of tilted, um, but it's better than it would be. If she doesn't have those patches on, she kind of is upside down. So uh, a question, how old are they when they start mating? Most sea turtles don't reach adulthood until they're about 30 years old. Um, so pretty old, crazy. Um, and so most of these sea turtles that are here are not adults yet, um, and we don't know if they are males or females. Um, until they're adults either. They look pretty much exactly the same until they get to be adults and then the only difference really is that the males will have a longer tail. So they're kind of hard to tell um, the difference but um, luckily it doesn't really change a whole lot for um, taking care of them. I told you we did find out that Ed um, was a female because they had to do all of those surgeries um, inside of her body so they were able to do that. I would say so the most common sickness for turtles in this place um, we see all kinds of stuff. Right now, I would say it's the hook and line. So a lot of sea turtles caught on hooks right now, but um, it is our stranding season. So we call it um, usually between May and October, we see the most sea turtles. Um, so right now having 25 of them here is, that may be the most I've seen here at any given time um, in the last you know, two years. Um, I think 25 has been the most sea turtles we've been, we've been caring for at once. Um, but they can be here anywhere from uh, two months to two years. It really depends on what they came in for. So like I said, this one here, Fox, um, has been here for um, two years. Um, but some of our sea turtles, if they're just the ones that had a hook caught in their cheek, um, we get it removed, they heal up quickly, they could be ready to be released again in two months. So um, it's a very wide range for recovery. And, and how many do you, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you probably have to turn some away from time to time, but do you get them, you know, coming in weekly or, and, and I think you did say it was seasonal, um, but could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, I don't think we have had to turn any away. Um, yeah. Luckily, we can work with some other facilities too, so if we really were at max capacity, um, I think we can kind of find a place for them. So, um, so I think we haven't, we haven't had to do that, and sometimes we actually help other people too. Um, so during the winter, there's a lot of areas um, that have sea turtles that hold sun, um, which actually works perfect when we're talking about ocean temperatures. Um, because ocean temperatures are changing, um, sometimes they are much colder in places than they wouldn't normally have been, um, or the temperatures are just not, um, they're not doing the same seasonal things that they would be doing. So um, there are a lot of sea turtles that are cold sun. They're reptiles, they need their body to be a good warm temperature. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes they haven't migrated far enough south, and the waters will get too cold for them too fast. Um, and they had in like the New England area um, hundreds of sea turtles that, that cold to them pretty much every year for the last couple of years. Mm. So we've been able to take in um, a couple of them here too. Um, during the winter, since we usually have less patients here, um, that frees up a little bit of room. And it's actually somebody who volunteers um, as a pilot to pick up those turtles and bring them back here to us, which is pretty cool. Um, and, and yes, uh, the ocean temperature is affecting male versus female. Um, definitely true. Um, so sea turtles, um, their eggs will develop in the sand, so it's not really ocean temperatures, but earth temperatures changing will definitely make a difference um, for those sea turtles. And it's warmer temperatures causes more females um, to be produced than males. Those eggs will actually um, develop into females more often if the sand is warmer. Um, I believe last summer they had um, even one small island that that they were taking um, data on and, and found only females passing there. So um, we definitely could see the effects of that. Um, since they don't mature for about 30 years, we might not see the effects of that for another 25 or so, but, um, but we definitely could. Sea turtles migrate definitely. Um, they're going to migrate um, all up and down the coast here, all the species. Um, so 
still go a little bit further north, like towards New England. That was probably as far as far north as they're going to go, and then they go all the way down to the Bahamas. Um, some types of sea turtles even kind of wrap around um, Florida um, all the way along the west coast too. And there was one question about the cold stun. It, it, uh, someone asked how long it would take to recover from the cold stun. Yeah, um, it kind of depends. So part of the problem is they, um, they develop a lot of other issues. Usually if they're cold stunned, um, they often are weak because they haven't eaten in a long time. Um, sometimes they end up with a lot of things growing on them, lots of barnacles, um, which are not always a bad thing, but sometimes they'll have too many growing on them. Um, so. It kind of depends, but from the actual just being cold, um, not too long. We will um, usually put them in a tank of pretty cold water. Obviously, we don't want to be too cold, but we don't want to shock their bodies and make them too warm either. So um, I think that the temperature is usually raised about half a degree to one degree um, every day. So it's um, closer to like 70, um, 70 degrees. 70 degrees. Let's see. Turtle ever died? Um, I mean, yes, unfortunately. Um, we've been really lucky that that is very rare. Um, our, our doctors here are really good. Our biologists are amazing. Um, and we've been able to help a lot of sea turtles. But sometimes, with it, especially ones that have been hit by a boat, um, their injuries can be very, very severe when they first come in. And then a boat strike to the head, um, it's just not, not like a good situation for a sea turtle. But sometimes, um, unfortunately, um, it's as much as maybe needs to kind of humanely take care of that animal. So um, not every time can we be successful, but almost 300 times we have. So I'm uh, trying to look at the brain side of it. And, and how many doctors or biologists do you have on staff to help these turtles? Um, it's actually a pretty small staff. We have uh, two veterinarians um, on staff. Um, we have um, a vet technician um, and we have three um, sea turtle biologists. Um, we usually run with a lot more uh, volunteers helping us too, um, although we are kind of working with a nice small crew right now, um, keeping less people in the building. So um, right now those sea turtle biologists are doing it all. <laughs> yeah, staying busy. Good job. You guys have any other questions? I'll go over to kind of finish up. Yeah, if you have any any other questions, please ask them now, now guys, while Susan's on. Well, like I mentioned, we do have um, the ability to kind of join you for your own Zoom calls and stuff if you want. Uh, if you want that, that information is on our website. Um, and I would be happy, it would probably be me, so I could join you bring some animals. Um, cool job. All right. Um, so we no, are you doing do a that. fantastic job. You, you seem like a natural educator. So well done. And thank you so much. Um, we're having some thank yous come in right now. So um, any, any other questions? We'll just give it another, I guess, 30 seconds or so. Yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you guys. Oh, yeah, that's a really good one. Thanks, Sarah. Um, mentioning things that beach goers can do. Yes. If you guys are going to the beach, there's a lot of things we can do right now, especially because sea turtles are starting to hatch. Um, and some sea turtles are still laying their eggs. So um, obviously keeping the beach really clean, that will help all animals. Um, and hopefully it's something everybody would want to do anyways. But um, I also like to try to make it cleaner than how I found it too. So not only picking up my stuff, but try to pick up any extra trash I see. Um, but it's even simple stuff. Like um, if you're going to the beach for a week or so, um, not leaving your chairs out on the beach um, because like, sea turtles can actually get caught in them when they're trying to come up and lay their eggs um, or when the sea turtles are hatching. Um, so you don't want to leave anything out on the beach even if you're planning to come back for it. Um, and if you build sand castles or dig holes, um, it's actually really important to knock those sand castles down and fill those holes in. Um, makes it a lot easier for the little sea turtle hatchlings to make it um, back out to the ocean. Um, but yeah, those are definitely things we can be doing while we're out on the beaches. And definitely keep your lights off too on the beach. That's one that you, you hear a lot of. It's lights out for the turtles. So um, the sea turtles will actually go the wrong direction when they hatch. They'll head towards the beach houses with their lights on instead of towards the light reflecting off the ocean. So you want to keep your lights off too. Okay. And there was that one question about this: the green, or why why are the green sea turtles called green? Oh yeah, <laughs> um, it's actually they do turn a little bit green um, from the food that they eat. 
Um, so the fat of their body kind of around their armpit and their hips does get a little bit green. Um, and it's from all the green stuff that they eat, stuff like sea grass and seaweed. Um, and just kind of out of curiosity, are, is there anything um, that the local communities are doing there, um, like initiatives or just through the government to reduce plastics or um, you know, things? Yeah, so? um, they, we have some great, great initiatives coming in. Um, they banned a lot of plastics um, in a lot of restaurants and areas um, in Charleston County um, and then also in a couple of different townships too, so in Mount Pleasant. Um, and I think Greens Island ended up doing it too, but um, unfortunately, also trying to keep everything really stale right now for humans. I think a lot of those bans have been lifted temporarily. Um, they are doing a lot more plastic wear takeout and stuff like that. So, um, unfortunately, that's, that's something that's kind of common. But, but that's also something we can do to help, too. So, um, trying to get involved in, in kind of limiting how much restaurants are using plastic, giving out plastic, um, you know, giving your business to the companies that are, are spending maybe a little bit more to give you those sustainable options. Um, it, it's, you know, kind of voting with your money is how I think of it. So I'm yeah, um, yeah. trying to choose a place that's kind of doing things right and help a lot too. And then the Kemp's Ridley, where did, how did that get its name? Um, I think it's named after the scientist that discovered it, which is someone Kemp, uh, I should probably remember that. <laughs> um, but I'm not exactly sure. And there are, there's another type of Ridley too. So um, I think there was the Olive Ridley's um, and then they decided that the Kemp's Ridley was a different species. Um, and I think that was the scientist um, um, that discovered that. All right. All right, guys, any other questions? All right, so Susan, you get my vote for coolest face mask that I have ever seen so far. So it's a great one. Um, thanks for sharing your knowledge, your energy, your enthusiasm. Uh, and I mean, that was a really cool tour. So thank you. I know everybody loved it. Um, well, and now and here's, a, here's a couple more questions. Um, you might've mentioned this earlier. I think it was around 500 pounds, did you say? The biggest one that we have right now is probably closer to 300, maybe 400, the very large. So don't check everybody's recent weights. But, um, but yeah, the largest one we ever had was almost 500. Um, and the loggerhead hatchlings, hatch during the day, know the right way to go. Um, they have pretty good instincts. They usually are kind of headed out towards, um, towards the oceans, but, but we do think they get kind of confused going either way. One of the bigger issues is not even the little ones that are hatching going the wrong way. It's um, the lights will often scare off the moms that are coming up to lay their eggs. They'll come up and then they'll decide it's too bright and they'll turn around and the back. Um, they won't lay their eggs there. So it's kind of helping them both out. Keep those lights off. Okay. Is that everybody? All right. If anybody um, has a question, you, you can email me and I can, uh, you know, find the answer probably with Susan, um, through Susan. So uh, I appreciate it. Um, yes, and you'll get a link to uh, the recording. So we'll pass that along uh, afterwards. Um, all right. Great. Thank you for the support and support thank the event as well. Um, all right, Susan, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, maybe we can do one, you know, in the, in the future as well. So, uh, fantastic. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. It was great talking right. to you guys. Thank you. Right. See you, Susan. Bye.